we're live at least i hope we are i'm pulling it up on my ipad so i can watch and then i'm going to turn off my screen because i don't know if you've ever done a facebook live but you can see yourself and i find that very distracting i'm going to sit and look at myself okay it looks like i'm coming through can you let me know if you're hearing me Mandy, I see that you're here. If you can let me know that you're hearing me, that'd be really super helpful. Wearing my glasses. Do you like my glasses? Okay. Pull up the comments. Can you let me know if you're hearing me? Mandy, I see that you're here. If you can let me know that you're hearing me, that'd be really super helpful. Wearing my glasses. Okay, great. We're live. Great. Super, super, super. Excited that you could join me today. I'm trying to figure out where to put my iPad. I used to have a really great iPad holder and it got worn out and gross. So I ordered a new one from Amazon and I don't like it. It doesn't hold as nicely. So if you see me fussing, that's what I'm doing. I'm fussing with my iPad holder. Yay. I think I got it where I like it. Okay, good. I've got to swipe left. Siri, okay, I can hear you, I can hear you, I can hear you. Okay, super duper. I'm going to turn off my screen. So I'm not sitting here looking at myself. Okay, yay. <laughs> what I really wish I could do was bring up my little PowerPoint. You guys know how much I love those, right? Okay, well, I can see your comments and you can talk to me. Welcome. Let's see. I want to welcome Mandy, Christy, Carol, uh, Diane, Kathy, another Kathy. We've got. Wendy, Jackie, Dorothy, Karen, lots of people joining us. Okay, super, 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 super. Well, happy, happy new year. And what I wanted to do uh, was encourage you. The scripture says, go out with joy, be led forth with peace. And uh, I meant to look up the reference for that. It's been crazy. I don't know about anybody else, but I have had an army of people in my house the last guest left at five o'clock this morning which meant i meant meant i was awake at 5 30 so i mean it was wonderful but most of you know i have a tiny townhouse right by the beach and we had nine people here and it's is people were sleeping everywhere you couldn't walk without stepping on a person so it was great it was wonderful but i'm also happy to have my house back um, but, uh, anyway, I wanted to tell you that I, I believe the Lord is saying, go out with joy and be led forth with peace. And I was telling you, I forgot to look up the reference on that. I want to say it's, it's either Isaiah or Proverbs or Psalms. I don't know, but there's a great passage. Go out with joy, be led forth with peace. And the reason I think that that's important is because if you're anything like me, you are very, very tempted uh, on this moment to look back at 2018 and have a bunch of regrets and think about all the things that you didn't do, uh, what your resolutions were last year. And I think it's really easy for us to kind of focus on the negative and all the things that we didn't do, all the resolutions that we didn't follow through on. And I don't think that that's where God wants us to be. So let's just pray and ask Holy Spirit to be with us. And then I have a little teaching from the book of Nehemiah. And I want to tell you what we're going to be doing for the next five days and actually the next 26 days. And I really should say 365 days as we head into 2019. So Lord, I thank you so much for this privilege, for this opportunity to meet with your daughters you might even have some sons here, but with your children today and to encourage them with the word you've given me, it says in the word comfort, comfort my people, comfort, comfort my people, says the Lord. And so today I want to comfort your people and encourage them to focus on what you have done in their life, those things that went well, that they might be led forth with joy and with peace and confidence as they walk into 2019 and not drag a bunch of regrets and unfinished tasks into this glorious new year with them. We thank you 
for your presence here among us. We pray for the technology, that it would cooperate, and we're just excited for what you're going to do. We love you to pieces. You're an awesome, awesome guide, and we're just so blessed to be your kids. I mean, what else do you want, right? You get the perfect daddy. That's pretty good. That's, uh, I mean, that's halfway home, isn't it? Well, I sent out a few emails. I didn't know if you followed along with those, but I talked about um, three critical questions, and, and I think that it would be good to review those real quick, and then I want to jump into the Nehemiah teaching. And those simply were, um, what do you believe no matter what? What do you do no matter what? And who are you determined to become no matter what and i did kind of a mini teaching on that and I, I don't want to spend too much time on it but i think it's important that we touch upon it here and i began with what do you believe no matter what and of course you believe in god or you wouldn't be part of the chapel club Duh. but what do you believe about him and specifically what do you believe about God's relationship with you and his feelings towards you? Because I'm just going to confess right here, right now, throughout a lot of my Christian life, and let's just be fully transparent, I still have my days, when I kind of picture God sitting up on the throne and he's stumped. And he's, at, he's like, wait, can somebody remind me what I was thinking when I picked this one? I mean, I know I handpicked her. I know I called her. I know I ordained her, but I, I'm, I'm trying to remember what I was thinking because she's a bit of a mess and I'm stumped and I, I don't know what I'm going to do with her now. I mean, look at what, well, look what, Gabriel, look what this kid's up to. I'm stumped. And he, come on, is that's not just me. That's not just me. So, so do you believe that God is kind of passively wondering what on earth and i mean what did that girl do with 2018 i gave her a full year i gave her a prophetic word i gave her a watch word to take into 2018 now what did that kid do with it okay just, just please join me where we can have some uh, group uh, group engagement here i've got to scan so i can see your comments i'm not the only one and, and that's not where daddy wants us to be. He said, remember, he said he wants us to go out with joy <laughs> and be led forth with peace. That, that's not who he, God, God's not stumped. He's, he's not befuddled. Uh, he, he's not wondering where 2018 went. He's not checking his credit score uh, to see if he can come up with money to lend you to get out of debt. He's, he's not baffled. He knew what 2018 was going to look like. Before the calendar turned the page, all the days appointed for you, they were numbered. God, God gets it. God gets you. He knows you. Now, see, here's, here's what I'm asking. Do, do you see God as kind of passively uh, on the sidelines, you know, in the stands, checking out your performance? I really feel that way sometimes unless I check myself and say, wait, that's not the God I see in Scripture. Do, do you believe that God is proactively working all things together for your good because you, he loves you and you love him or you wouldn't be sitting here on New Year's Eve listening to me or watching the replay? And you're called according to his purpose. So he's working, he's working it all together. Not that all of it is good, but he's working it all together for good. And he's like really big. And he's bigger than your mistakes. And if God is not bigger than your mistakes in your mind, then then you don't know God. I mean, you 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 you're you're believing wrongly about him. And that that's kind of what I'm driving at. What do you believe no matter what? And I, I I'm encouraging you, and this is how you're gonna go out with joy and be led forth with peace. I'm encouraging you to believe no matter what 2018 looked like, that God is completely 100 percent for you. God is for you. He's in favor of you. He's all about you. He loves you. He's not giving up on you. He's just getting started. So, so that's kind of, kind of step one. What, what do you believe about God and his dealings with you? 
That's foundational. See, if you believe really that God is the God of the impossible, that any, that, then anything is possible for you. And if he's proactively involved in your life and not a passive bystander checking up on your performance, then all things are possible for you. I mean, th there's joy. There's peace. There, there's a way to walk into 2019 with your shoulders back. I've been working on my posture. <laughs> with your shoulders back and your, head's and your head held high. That's one of my favorite verses in Leviticus. I broke the bars of your yoke and enabled you to walk with your head held high. And God wants you. Whatever happened in 2018, I know. Listen, we're all in this together. I have stuff I looked at for 2018. And girl, I'm like the girl who reviews my annual goals every day. I'll look at them every day, but just like anybody else, I, I could look at them and think, yeah, you know, I really ought to do something about that. And tomorrow I'm going to get right on it. I think we're the same. So I have some areas that I'm disappointed. I so thought I would be completely fluent in Espanol. I even spent three months in Costa Rica studying. And I'm just but you know, daddy knew. He knew that three months wasn't going to be enough for me. That's okay. Focus on the process. I did a little teaching on this with the RLC ladies. Uh, I'm, I think I'm going to do more on it in the, in the coming days. You guys all know I'm doing five free days of the best year ever, January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th, right? So starting tomorrow. Uh, uh, same time, same place. Well, not same place. I'll do it on my public Facebook page. So I'll have free five days. And so I might, I might dive into to some of that, uh, some of this material during those five days. But I shared, you know, just kind of a revelation. I've been doing a lot of research. You know, I'm a, I'm a, like a, a bookaholic, so and, and a podcastaholic and, and all of that jazz. But the idea that rather than having like a goal, like have a process. In other words. Uh, as we look at the coming year, and I'm way ahead of where I want to be, rather than saying, okay, th so this year I want to write a book, and that's kind of the outcome, commit to the process and say, I'm going to write every day for 30 minutes, and or I'm going to come up with 500 words. So if I can do more than 500 words in 30 minutes, okay, I'm done. But at the end of 30 minutes, I'm still not at 500 words. I need to keep writing. And, and just be focused on the process. Same with weight loss. Rather than saying, I'm going to lose 20 pounds this year. Commit to the process. I'm going to wake up every day an hour earlier and get my precious little self to the gym. Whatever. And then let, let the outcome kind of take care of itself. And that, that's one of my favorite quotes. If you've been around my ministry very long, you've heard me quote Cease Murphy. I'm passionately involved in the process, but emotionally detached from the outcome. Again, coming, how do we go into 2018, 2019 with joy and peace? Because we say, you know what? We were in a process in 2018. You know, the outcome may not have looked exactly like we want it to look, but were we partnering with the Holy Spirit in the process? We're still, you know, you still got a pulse. You're still alive. God's still at work. You're in the process. So don't get overly depressed and defeated if the outcome didn't look exactly like you wanted. Is, is this helping somebody? Let me know. My Emma, is someone getting some help? You know, the idea of this Facebook Live is for you to engage with me. Um, I just ordered a new pair of glasses, so hopefully I'll be able to see more. And I will take a minute when I'm done teaching to look at your comments. I've got my little iPad here so I can kind of see them on the screen. But, but as we go into these five days together and we kind of talk about making resolutions, which I'm all in favor of for the new year, and I do a ton of teaching in the Best Year Ever class on goal setting, I just, I just kind of want to tell myself and you, let make sure that we, in, in all of our planning, all of our dreaming with God, that we're really engaging with the process. And what are we going to do daily? And I'm, I'm, I'm jumping. I'm going to come back to that. Okay. So we talked about believe. What do you believe no matter what? No matter what, I believe, you know, God's for me. I believe that no matter what. I believe that no matter what, any day, 
I can say, you know what, daddy, I'm ready. I'm ready to cooperate with the process. I want all, everything that you purpose for my life. I want it all. And I can say that, I can say that at any point. And you know what? My daddy's big enough to make it happen beginning in that very moment. It's not too late. You haven't made too many mistakes. I haven't either. Okay. And what do you believe about you? Well, I hope you just believe that anything is possible. And there's no such thing as dreaming too big. There's no such thing as a bridge too far. There's no, listen, one of my, my most powerful part, well, you guys all know Rennie Ling. She's my partner in RLC. Her husband prayed for me one time. I never forget it. He said, Donna, the Lord says, when I called you and made the plan for your life, I factored you into the equation. Yeah, he knew. He, he knows all about you. And he factored you into the equation. So then, then the, the, the third, what, you know, no matter what is who, are you determined to become no matter what? Who And that, you know, comes back to my book, Becoming the Woman I Want to Be. If you've not done that book yet, you got to do it. So I, I think it's my, well, now it's my second favorite because my new favorite is Special Blessings Prayer. But it's just one of my all-time favorites. And, and what the Lord showed me there is, you know, again, it's the process. It's becoming and, and having a vision of who the ultimate you is and what's possible for you. And we're going to do, again, we're going to do a lot with that in the, um, the make this your best year ever class that's going to begin in January. So get that vision and say, you know, I'm going to become that woman no matter what and have that vision. That's all I'm going to say about it because I'm going to do so much more with that in the coming class. And then in the middle, that kind of question, what I called the messy middle of these three questions was, what do you do no matter what? And you know how you close the gap between what you believe and your experience, what you believe, what you know in your heart is, is possible, the vision? You know the way you close that gap? It's what you do daily. Yeah, I know. Me, me, I don't like it either. We, we always agree, right? We never like this stuff. But it, that, that's, that's what makes a difference what you do daily. And, and you're the only one who can bring that to the table and, and make some decisions. In 2019, what are you going to do daily? No matter what, no matter what. And, and keep it simple. I'm keeping it simple this year. Again, we're going to do a lot more with this in the free five-day class. And then that free five-day class is going to be followed by a paid but very affordable 21-day class. So you and I and all of us, we could have 26 days together. To kick this year off and I well 27 if we include today and so I wanted to with kind of that just overview and, and background I wanted to look at Nehemiah and I woke up this morning at five because that's kind of my thing I'm gonna wake up at five every day that's gonna be my process and I'm not gonna touch any electronic device for five hours which still means by 10 o'clock I can be on the internet with you people so five to 10, going to be up, going to be awake. I've got a bunch of things I want to do, but the most important thing, got to come up with 500 words. Got to write, right? I'm a writer. I need to write every day. And I haven't been doing that, not for a long time. Okay. So this morning I woke up and was praying and the Lord just led me to Nehemiah and I came up with 12 C's that I think we can learn from, from the life of Nehemiah. You ready? Okay, here we go. All right. The first thing I want to say, the first C is uh, comforts. And Nehemiah's name actually means God comforts. And the word comfort in the Old Testament, actually the original word means breathe again. And it came from, uh, you know, they had these great horses in the Middle East, it's really hot, and they'd run long distances, and they would charge, and they would drive, and they would ride those horses, and then finally, you know, God bless that poor animal, the rider would stop and let the horse catch its breath, and I'm sure the rider is a decent person when you pat that horse and say, good job, horsey, you did good, look how far you made it, well, we've still got a ways to go, but Let's just stop 
and catch your breath. That, that's the Old Testament word for comfort. And God, God wants to comfort you today and give you a chance to just stop. You've been running. Come on. You feel you, not just me. You, we've all been running like crazy. I already confessed and nine people sleeping on couches and futons and I know your holiday was as crazy as mine. Did it start with Thanksgiving? I don't know. And God's saying, breathe, stop, rest. <sighs> Let it all go here. Just do this. Just wipe everything off your shoulders. The weight of the world Just take it off. Breathe. Hear your daddy say, you did good. Come on, that wasn't a perfect year, but... Pretty good. And make sure you talk. That's what we were going to do today, but God went in a different direction. Maybe we'll do some of that during the um, the five-day free class. And just, just taking time to say, what were the wins? I've already done it. What were the wins? What were the highlights in, in 2018? And then, yeah, okay, what were some of the opportunities for growth in 2019? Can we, can we call this that? I called them assets and, and opportunities. It's all a win, right? And then in the New Testament, the word comfort is uh, rendered uh, comfort is parakletos. And it actually means called alongside. And just that awareness that the, the same one who's saying, okay, just stop, breathe, take a break. You've been running hard, gave it all you had in 2018. And now I'm calling you and I'm, gonna, I'm alongside you. And we're going to move forward together. That's what Nehemiah's name means. It means God comforts. And I, I, hope, has, I hope, has this comforted somebody? I, I hope I have spared someone the ordeal of spending uh, New Year's Eve in regret. Don't do it. Yeah? Did I do it? <laughs> then I did what my daddy asked me to do. Okay. And then the, the next C about him is just that he was a cupbearer. And there's a few things I want to say about that. He he had a he had a day job. He had a regular job. He had a response. He, he had a job. It's really kind of it. I have a cup. This was his job. Here's your cup. He had to taste it first. Notice if he died. Okay, I'm still alive. It's not poisoned. Okay, here's your cup. Here's your cup. Here's your cup. You know, really, that was his job. Here's your, to the king, here's your cup. I tasted it. Here's your cup. That was his job. And, and, and the crazy thing is, I mean, how mundane would that feel day after day after day? Here's your cup. 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 Uh, kind of boring. Kind of, kind of tedious. But phenomenally important. Because he was keeping the king alive. He was protecting him. And I just, most of my ministry, I really do feel, is to women who don't have children at home, for the most part. You know, I, I feel like I'm in that season of life where, um, you know, kind of empty nest, if you will, or children are grown. You're not, you know, you're not at home. Most of my ministry is, is to women in that season. They're in their 40s, their 50s, beyond. But, but just in case you're still in that busy season of kids at home or you're you're thinking about it i i think it's kind of like a cup bearer job isn't it it's like here's your cup here's your sippy cup here's your sippy cup here's your sippy cup and it can kind of feel mundane but wow wow god has you there to, for for their protection and for their salvation and, you know, you, I don't know what your job is. Maybe you're a doctor. Maybe we have a lot of psychologists around here. Um, I, I, do, I know God's just calling me to psychologists. It's interesting. A lot of the work I did in Brazil, partnership was with psychologists. So maybe you're a psychologist. Maybe you're a doctor. Maybe, or, you know, whatever your calling is, you know, there, there are moments when it, it, it feels mundane, right? There's stuff you just got to do over and over and over again. Even if you're a lawyer or whatever, it, it can feel routine. But just know, as Nehemiah did, you know what? God has me here. I'm here to save lives. It looks like I'm here to, to, to hand this cup. 
But I know what I'm here for. I, I'm here to save lives. I'm here to show up every day with integrity. I'm here to so impress this person with who I am and the person I'm in the process of becoming that when I share with them what God is calling me to do in kind of the bigger kingdom way, they're on board with it. I've seen this with my daughter. You know, she's kind of, I mean, her main income is here's your menu. She, she works at a very fancy restaurant, but all she does is give people their menu and walk them to your ta their table. Here's your menu, here's your menu, here's your menu. You kind of wonder. Is that what she went to Bible college to get a degree in ministerial leadership for? She's even on a TV show, and most days it's like, take two, retake, take two, retake. But she knows that she's there to save lives. And, and when she announced that she's going on a mission trip, last year she went to Haiti, the year before that she went to Zimbabwe or wherever she's going, it's like, her coworkers, her boss, I mean, I know people, like the boss like, here, I'll write the check. You're going on a mission trip, here's the check. It's because of the way you show up at that job, that J-O-B, the kind of integrity that you bring. So whatever it is that you're doing, that you're tempted to view as a you know, cup bearing, just understand and, and, and ask God even to give you a, a greater sense of why am I really here? Because I know I'm, I'm here for something more. God has me here. I am here in God's keeping under his training for his time, Andrew Mary. And whatever your job is, whether it's mothering, whether it's nursing, whether you're counselor, whatever. So I'm here because God has me here. And when, when my work here is accomplished, God's going to move me out. But meanwhile, I'm going to show up with integrity. And I, I talk, the next C is kind of career excellence. It's, it's, it's related I like the number, like God just gave me 12 numbers. So career excellence. And I, and I want to just kind of challenge you to reflect. And I, I did this, I did an inventory. What Kindle book, what books did you read last year? Now, Donna, be nice. Because sometimes you're too much of a Jersey girl and people just think it's harsh. So be nice. So I'm going to very delicately say this. What books did you read of actual substance? I'm sorry, romance novels? I hope you still love me. I said it. What, what, what books did you read to advance your personal and professional development? To make you a better employee, to make you a better person, a better, stronger Christian? What, make a list. What books did you read last year? I was working on this now on Goodreads the other day. How about Audible books? I love Audible. See, what I'm saying is I think Nehemiah, if he lived today, he'd be totally down with like Kindle books. He'd be downloading them. He'd be listening to Audible in between going to the wine, you know, going to the wine cellar, listening to some Audible books. I'm listening to the Spanish New Testament. Okay. He, he would be listening, learning a new language. He'd be doing something. To, to develop, again, the, back, back to those daily Jews, not that you'd be in it to win it. How many conferences did you attend? My goal was four. I did more than four. Conferences, special events where God's people come together in, in the presence of God. How much of that did you do? What did you do to become excellent in whatever your calling is. If you're called into full-time ministry, you know, what did you do with that? What did you do to cultivate the spiritual disciplines? How serious were you about that? What did you do daily? And I, and I also wanted to say about Nehemiah, um, I, and I think it's really important. I don't know if it's under, I might be getting ahead, but he, he lived at around 435 BC. And we know that, that the only person really kind of after him uh, of great significance 
in, in the Bible is Malachi, which is the last book of the Bible. The, the Old Testament is not in order. Um, but Malachi just co comes last. He's a little bit um, earlier in, in the 400s, closer to um, the time of Christ. So you've got Ezra, Nehemiah, and then Malachi. So th these three guys kind of together do a work of transformation and national transformation and rebuilding the people of Israel so that, now watch this carefully, for 400 years, there's silence, right? The Old Testament ends and then the birth of Christ is announced with Matthew or in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all that, the, the New Testament begins. There's that 400 years of silence. To the last really significant ministry, you know, it's kind of Nehemiah, right? And Malachi too. They may even been a little bit contemporary. And when the New Testament opens, like, where's all the idolatry? Wait, where's the bell worship? Where's the Molech statues? <laughs> where, where are the children being sacrificed in the fire to demons? It's gone. It's all gone. I mean, if it was going on, we, you know, Jesus would have talked about it. It's gone. And, and the amazing thing is, like, the whole Old Testament is filled with that stuff, right? You've read the book. But after Ezra kind of lays a foundation, we got to give him props. But the work that Nehemiah does, talk about a work that endures national transformation that lasted for 400 years. And he wasn't a minister. He wasn't a full-time, he wasn't in full-time ministry. He was a cupbearer. He was a government employee. Then he was a politician, became a governor. He was a general contractor, right, overseeing a building project. Served two terms as governor. Then he kind of went back to work for, you know, in the government. So he wasn't in full-time ministry. And yet the impact of his calling endures. And I think we can make a case that Nehemiah was a huge part of that work, that, that revival that we see in chapter 8 of the book of Nehemiah, the Watergate revival it's called that the impact of that revival was so profound on that nation that it endured generation, generation, generation. I mean, there were issues of legalism and, and you know all kinds of stuff, but it wasn't perfect. But we didn't see the kind of devil worship that we saw throughout, all throughout the Old Testament. Anyway, so I got a little bit off on that. Uh, the next C is compassion. Anyway, so I was just trying, I'm trying to challenge your thinking again. You know, maybe you're like, oh, gee, I really was going to do more ministry in 2018. Well, you know, maybe, maybe you did more ministry than you know. Um, and then the, the next C is compassion. You know, he, he begins, he hears that the walls of Jerusalem are broken down. He's living in what is now Iran. Did you know that? He served the king of Persia. Persia is modern day Iran. In fact, people from Iran are still called Persian. They still speak Persian language and eat Persian food. I should know. I was just at a Persian restaurant two days ago. So he was Persian, lived in modern day Iran. And uh, when, when Nehemiah hears, he's living in Iran, here's what's happening in another country. Yeah, I'm going somewhere with this. I mean, he just breaks down. His heart is so moved with compassion that he begins to fast and he begins to pray and he begins to say, you know what, God, I'm not in full-time ministry, but, but I have some skills and I would be willing to go to that other country and use my skills to make a difference. And I really want to encourage you even challenge you and invite you to really prayerfully consider. We are doing our very first Women's Empowerment University mission trip in conjunction with Hispanic International Ministries and Esperanza de Vida. And we're going to Guatemala. It's an incredible ministry. 
There's work to be done there. They're doing an amazing work of rebuilding. It's really one of the most impressive ministries I've seen anywhere in the world. And I would really love for you to, with Nehemiah, allow the Holy Spirit to so move you with compassion that you're willing to go to another country and say, here's the skills I have. I'm way, I want to make a difference. Big thing we're looking for right now is people who can sew. We have Linda Burns and, and we have uh, some other people. I get Paula just sent us some beautiful dresses. But if you can sew or you know women who can sew or you're willing to talk to your church and women in your community, we're, we would love to connect with you. Um, we also have someone who's making little wooden toys. If you have any kind of talent that you would like to contribute, we'd, we'd love to, you can send the dresses and there's a mailing address in um, Rhode Island where you'll be able to ship them. Uh, or we'd love you, for you to come with us and bring the dresses with you and deliver them to the children there. Children need clothes and, and we, uh, dresses are fun, but we also need people who can make shorts uh, for the boys or people who want to donate t-shirts for them. We need, do you know, do you know carpentry? Maybe your husband's a carpenter. Maybe you yourself are handy. There's a lot of construction projects. Are you a nurse? Are you a doctor? Are you a dentist? Are you a physical therapist? Are you a nutritionist? Are you a teacher? Are you an evangelist? Do you have compassion for orphans or widows or widowers? Do you have compassion for the handicapped? Have you worked with a handicapped? Maybe you're a speech or whatever skill you have. My prayer is that you, like Nehemiah, would allow God to so move you with compassion that you're willing to step out as he did and say, I will go to another country. Now, of course, he was ethnically, he was Jewish. So he was returning to his people. Maybe you're Latino. But you live in the United States. I want to challenge you. You speak Spanish. We need you for sure. Come with us. Real, I really want you to do it. We're going last week of May up until June 1st, that last Saturday to Saturday. And I'll be setting up that website that's on my list. So that's the seat, compassion. Allow God. And, you know, and I want to say this too, reflecting on 2018. Maybe, you know, Donna, 2018. It's terrible. I can't wait for it to be over. You know, the Bible says comfort others with the comfort we ourselves have received. And maybe some of what God was doing in 2018 was giving you a heart of compassion out of the, the, the pain and the brokenness that you've been through, some of the challenges you've had. And out of that compassion, you're like, you know what? I'm ready to give back. I want to comfort others. God's been there for me. It wasn't the year I thought it was going to be. But now out of that, I'm ready to step into 2019. And from that, that kind of that new credential. <laughs> I always say every, every, every hard thing you go through is, is a new credential. It makes you more compassionate, makes you more capable of, of ministering to others. So think about that. The next C was consecration. And I think it's important, and a lot of churches are doing it now, to take time early in January to really consecrate yourself to the Lord. And he did that. Nehemiah did that. He's like, he was moved with compassion. He felt God calling him to do something about it, to make a difference, to not... To, to, to step out of his comfort zone and to go. He kind of felt that happening. And he knew he would need his boss's permission. He knew he would need provision, a lot of other things. And so what he did is he consecrated himself through prayer and fasting. And we see later in the book of Nehemiah that God had so powerfully used that in his life that he, he called other people to it. He's like, join me, let's consecrate ourselves. But I want to, and, and consecration is powerful to me. It's something that God has done a lot in my life, challenging me to concentrate, consecrate myself, to set aside those seasons of prayer and fasting. And I'm doing that again in January. I know many of you are. We have a ton 
of resources. If you want to, uh, if you feel led to fast and pray, I'll be posting up some of those. Uh, Rennie Ling has put together a great new resource, Give, Pray, Fast. Um, Dr. Kristen put together, uh, if you know Dr. Kristen, a 10-day liquid fast, and she's a, she's a doctor, so she put together, she tells you exactly what beneficial beverages to have so that you still have nourishment in your body. That's called the breakthrough fast. I and mean, we just have so many resources uh, for consecrating yourself. And so I want to encourage you like Nehemiah to consecrate yourself and to let the Lord really do um, a deep work in your life as we begin this new year. Consecrate yourself through prayer and through fasting. Okay. And then the next C is confidence. God wants you to be confident. And we notice that Nehemiah is confident when his boss says, Hey, you're sad at work. You're in charge of being cheerful. Why are you sad? What is it? What's going on with you? He has the confidence to share what God is doing in his life with a non-believer with his boss. Do you have the confidence to share your faith with anybody? No matter how important they are, no matter how powerful they are, he had the confidence. And it was, I mean, it was out of that consecration and that sense of calling that he had the confidence, right? And, and not only that, but to ask for what he needed and to ask boldly. The other thing is that I notice he's bold with God. He's like, God, grant me favor. God, grant me favor. Do you ask God to grant you favor? I got in trouble on Facebook one time. I, I talked, I said I was asking God for favor and someone said, you're not allowed to ask for favor. I'm like, I'm asking for favor. <laughs> I am so asking for favor. Nehemiah did. Look, as we go into 2019, I want you to be confident in the people around you, sharing what you need, sharing what God's calling you to do, sharing how they can be part of it, even if they're not Christians. The trip to Guatemala is only going to be about $600. Now, it doesn't include your airfare, but that includes all of your expenses on the ground, all the food, the housing, all the stuff. And you're going to have to ask people. You're going to get to. You're going to have the opportunity to invite people to invest in your ministry, invest in the call of God upon your life. And I would encourage you to be confident about that and to ask with boldness. Oh, Donna. <coughs> this is why I don't like videos. If I wasn't on video, I would just go get a cough drop. And to, and to be confident with God too. Ask boldly. God, God doesn't want you crawling to him and saying, oh God, I messed up in 2018. And I don't deserve anything now. Conf concentrate, consecrate, confess. I'm coming to confess. Don't I have confession? I do. I do. do. Um, these aren't in order. Okay. And I might just have 11. But he had confidence to ask God, Lord, you've called me, but I'm going to need your favor to carry out the calling. You know, and that, that favor of God is, is the difference maker. That favor of God, it, it actually is a lightning rod. So you need to know that. The, 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 the favor of God, the people who are on board with God, what God's doing, um, or even if they're not Christians, they're, they're just kind of drawn to you and they don't even know why the favor of God will do that. But it also will polarize too. The people who are really just against God and not with him at all, they, they're not going to like you. And even some Christians, you, know, you just may not like it. For whatever reason, jealousy usually is the reason. You know, Joseph had the favor of God on his life. He had the favor of his earthly father, and it made his brothers so jealous they wanted to kill him. 
Nehemiah, well, let's stick with Nehemiah. Donna, you're doing Nehemiah today. Stick with Nehemiah. People were so threatened by the favor of God that was enabling him to rebuild those city walls so rapidly that they tried to intimidate him. They threatened him. They came against him. They opposed him. They wrote letters filled with lies about him. It'd be like they went on TV and all over social media trashing him. That's what it would be equivalent to. And he had the favor of God. So just, just know that. Boldly ask God for the favor of God, but understand that it's kind of a two-edged thing. It, 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 some people will be, I mean, so many people rose up and assisted him in the work that they got it done in record time. I mean, this thing had sat there undone for ages, like at least 70 years. I'm sure it's more. A long time. And they got it done, if I'm not mistaken, it was like 52 days. Record time because of the favor of God and all the people rallying who were drawn to the favor on his life and sensed God moving and wanted to be part of it. But at the exact same time, that favor sparked jealousy and demonic opposition. So you need to just kind of keep that in mind. The next C is that he had commitment to the kingdom cause. He had a commitment to a kingdom cause. He locked on to something larger than himself. And I, I will say that this really is my passion. And I, I want to say this with, with all the love I don't want to sound too New Jersey. I was just in New Jersey, so maybe, I don't know, it might be too much in the New Jersey girl's zone. So I want to be, I want to say this because I love you, okay? Too many of kids, too many of God's kids are settling. They are. And I hope you're not one of them, but... If you have been, it could change right now. God's for you, remember? God's for you and everything's possible for you. Don't, don't settle. Don't, don't, don't settle for a life that's always, here's the cup, here's the cup, here's the cup, right? I mean, Nehemiah did that. And he knew that God had him in that season for a reason. Here's the cup. Here's the cup. Here's the cup. But a moment came when he saw the larger kingdom cause that God had been preparing him and positioning for all along. And he stepped into that moment and seized it. And I just, I, I, implore you, I beg you, ask God to show you 2019. What's one thing that you can do that's larger than you? That's larger than your immediate family. That's larger than your job. And remember, I'm the same person who just told you a minute ago, whatever, remember, that was like the second C, right? Whatever your, whatever your career, it, it matters to God and he has you there. So I'm not, I'm not changing what I just said. It's not either or, it's both end. It's both end. Ask, ask Holy Spirit to show you at least one kingdom cause. Something that's larger than you that will live on after you. Nehemiah went for a season and, and was part of that huge kingdom cause, rebuilding the wall, that cause that lived on sanctifying the people of God, ridding them of idolatry, driving out their enemies, all of that, that project. That was just a season in his life. It wasn't his full-time career. He, he went back to working for the king. But he was willing to take that season and say, I, at some point in my life, I'm going to dedicate a season to something that's bigger than me. 
And I beg you, I beg you as a sister in Christ, at some point in 2019, take a season, take a week, come with me to Guatemala, but be part of something that's larger than you. I know you've got, I get it. You've got responsibility. I get it. So did Nehemiah. And it wasn't forever, but he went to another country and he made an impact that endured. And I am telling you, this work that we're going to do in Guatemala, it's going to endure. This is an incredible ministry. We're changing that nation. God is changing that nation. Do you know, and most of you know, the government of Guatemala paid for me. They paid for everything. for me to go to Guatemala and see this ministry, the government of Guatemala. Did you, did you hear that? Doesn't that sound like Nehemiah? The, the king of Iran, the king of Persia, paid for Nehemiah to go and help God's people. And I just had the same thing. Talk about favor. I, wasn't, I never even met the guy. Hector met the, the head of the consulate and he said, you should, you need Donna Parto to go. He said, okay, I'll book the flight and pay the way. Okay. I never even spoke to him. I never even talked to him. I didn't even know his name. I, I asked for his name so I could thank him. He had a commitment to a kingdom cause, something larger than himself. And I'm begging you to do that and to be part of something that's going to live long, long after you're gone. And of course your kids are part of that. Again, I'm not I'm, I'm saying, I'm not saying either or, I'm saying both end. So you've got 51 weeks of, of, here's your cup, here's your cup, here's your cup. Would you take one week? Would you take one week? As Nehemiah did, take a season, go to another country, use your skills that you've acquired on the job or acquired on the home front and use them to serve. I got to get moving. We, I had eight minutes left. Do you guys know? I don't know what number I'm on. I didn't number. Okay. So with the next, the, the next C with concentration, um, Nehemiah gets there. Okay. He, 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 he gets to Israel and he's, he's, he's able to step aside and really concentrate and, and analyze thoroughly. Okay. So what are the challenges? What do I need to do? What's the best way to, to organize all these people? What's the best way to get this project done. And then when distractions came, when th they tried to drag him to the Valley of Oh No, he was able to stay focused and to concentrate like, look, th this is what God's calling me to do right now. And I've got to give it my laser focused attention. And, and I just want to encourage those of you who feel like I'm called to write a book, I'm called to write a song, I'm called to um, a launch and whatever. You feel like there's something, I mean, it's been a paint a painting, whatever it is. There's this thing that this project that you, you know, you've been meaning to get done forever. You want to launch a podcast. You want to launch a blog, whatever. To take a season where you really concentrate and, and think through, okay, how, how am I going to get this done? How am I going to get this project done at some point in 2019? Again, Nehemiah was just 52 days. That's like, like less than two months. And, and, and it had, it, this project had been put, out off, put off for decades. And maybe there's a project. And, you know, typically, I mean, everybody wants to write a book. And I think everybody should write a book. So for a lot of you, that's what it is. And I am telling you that if you would concentrate and really think about it and take my class, Authority, get your book imprinted on Kindle in just 30 days. You could get it done this year and it'd be out of the way and you would come to the end of 2019 and you'd be like, yeah, I don't know where the year went, but I got that project done. I gave it a couple months and I got it done. Again, I encourage you, take the, the best year ever class. We're gonna, we're gonna help you do that. But he was able to concentrate. And he had courage. 
And specifically, I want to talk about two things he had courage to do. Number one, he had the courage to say, uh, no, right? They said, oh, we want to have a meeting. Can you come to the meeting in the Valley of Oh No? He said, uh, no, no, I can't go to every meeting. No, I don't have time for everybody because you're not for me. And, and even if they were for him, he needed to concentrate. That's not what God wanted him to do at that moment. And so he was able to say, uh, yeah, no, no. And you need to have the courage to say no. There are some people that don't have your best at heart. They don't. No, these people wanted to distract him. They wanted to discourage him. They wanted to defeat him. And it is hard to believe, but I think probably everyone listening to the sound of my voice probably has at least one person in your life. They're not really for you. They, maybe they should be. Maybe they could be. Maybe someday they will be. But right now, they're not, they're not on board. And I'm not, I was just having this conversation with somebody yesterday uh, who's trying to lose weight. And you know, people are like, oh, you look perfect the way you are. Have another cheeseburger. Small example. And you've got to be able to say, uh, yeah, no. Mm -mm. And he also had the courage to set boundaries. You remember when um, it's, he had gone, this is like late in, in the story of Nehemiah, but he had finished the wall. He went back to work for the king and then the king sent him back again for the second time. And when he returns, he's like, what are you guys doing? They had turned a room, one room in the, in the, uh, in the temple over to Tobiah, who was like a sworn enemy of God's people. And he's like, uh, yeah, no, not okay. We can't have this guy here. He's got to go. And he actually was like pulling people's hair and smacking them and throwing, I don't, you know, I don't want you to go that far, but he set boundaries. Yeah. He had the courage to set boundaries and say, no, you, you, you're not coming in my house. You're not going to be here. I'm not going there and you're not coming here. You can't stay here. I'm not going there and you can't stay here. He said both of those things. It took courage. And you know, it's going to take courage for you that there are some things that need to go and that you're not willing to go to. And there are some things that can't stay anymore. And if we were not at, you know, two minutes of two, I would spend a lot more time on this. But there are some things that you need to find the courage to say, yeah, mm -mm, no more. You can't stay in my head. You can't stay in my house. You can't stay in my marriage. You can't stay in my life. Bye-bye. And you need the courage to do that. There are two more C's, and I'm going to hit them real quick. He confessed his sins. He even confessed the sins of his ancestors. And I would encourage you, everybody, if you have not prayed the curse-breaking prayer, um, it's like seven bucks. That's probably about the best seven dollars that you're going to spend in 2018. So go buy it today. And if you don't get it today, get it tomorrow, and it'll be probably the best seven dollars you'll spend for 2019. Get the curse breaking prayer. And you might also want to get the prayer of protection. You can get the prayer itself free, but then the training is, is seven bucks for that too. But in that curse breaking prayer, I take you through this, breaking off the curses of the ancestors. And Nehemiah did that. He's like, I'm, I'm confessing all the crazy stuff that's gone on. Not just the stuff I've done, but all the, all the crazy stuff that's gone before. And he does that, like, like a curse-breaking prayer. And then they celebrate. They have a huge revival, and they celebrate their victories. And um, after you pray the curse-breaking prayer and the prayer of protection, do take time to celebrate. And I want you to celebrate. We began with go out with joy, be led forth with peace. I want you to take time this New Year's Eve to celebrate your victories. What did you do right in 2018? And just don't spend a lot of time on what went wrong. Don't worry. Those are opportunities for you to improve and grow 
in 2019, and we'll be working on those together. I uh, want to remind you, again, I'm going to close in prayer, and then maybe I'll jump over and take some questions. Um, we're going to have five free days of Make This Your Best Year Ever. Those sessions will be Facebook Live just like this, and they'll be held on my public Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash Donna Parto. So make sure that you go there and like it. It's not my profile. My profile is Donna Power Parto. My Facebook page. So you got to like that page, and then you'll be able to participate. And those will be five free days. And then at the end of those five free days, we'll have a paid class that I hope all of you will be part of as well. And if you're in the Renewal Lifestyle Club, you get that for half off. And you can stop by the... Uh, Renewal Lifestyle Club Facebook group, and I've posted the coupon code there, and you can register for the full 21-day class, really in-depth, uh, best class I've ever created for half price if you're in the RLC. Okay, well, let me go ahead and, I hope did this help somebody. I think I had ended up with 11 Cs, but I hope you enjoyed that. And let me pray for you and then take some questions. Well, Lord, I thank you so much for the life of Nehemiah. I thank you for the example of someone who um, took a season in his life and you multiplied the impact over many, 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 many generations. And what an encouragement that it was only 52 days out of one year of one man's life and you were able to multiply it in such a powerful way that it's still ministering to us thousands of years later. And, and I just pray that in this year, in 2019, that everyone who's listening and, and watching will do that same thing. Take a season. Doesn't even have to be the full year, but man, re, even maybe, maybe just really make January count for eternity. Take the enthusiasm of the new year. Take these 26 days. If we include today, that's 27. Take those days and make the most of them. And, and you might just do something in this short time together that will impact generations, impact nations for the kingdom. So excited. Amen. Okay, so now let me see your questions, comments. Carmen says that her word for this year is intentional. She needs to focus. She's writing a book. Awesome. So Carmen, this was totally for you. That I, I had not planned that. All I had, you guys, all I had was three little index cards. The rest was Holy Spirit. So Carmen, Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Carola is also saying that that word concentrate is for her as well. Ladies, feel free, hop on in with your questions, your comments. I'm here with you live. Mandy is sharing that God has been trying to lead her to this place. She says, I'm so attached to the outcome that it's been devastating. And so what I'm sharing today is really speaking to uh, Mandy's heart. So God, I just want to pray uh, for Mandy right now, Lord, and, and for all of us that you would break the stranglehold, break the stranglehold of focusing on outcomes and feeling perpetually defeated rather than just relaxing into the process. I said relaxing into the process. I actually, as I was praying that, I, I felt a saddle. And and I, I feel like this is for you. Like just kind of relax into the saddle. I know I started with a horse illustration. I'll come back to it. And just, just kind of strap in for the ride, the long ride. And it's kind of like as you relax in that saddle, you're, you're going to go even further. And so, yes, concentration, but also a, a divine rest. The people of God, Jesus, you know, God called them that, to enter into the rest as they were going into a war zone. 
And so even, even as God is, is giving you, like it, you guys have heard me say this so many times, soul at rest, body in motion. And, and I think that that's what the Lord is speaking to you right now, that soul at rest, resting in the saddle and, and going with God, body in motion. Julie's also sharing that she had a car accident and they had to pull her out of the car. She was trying to move to Florida, ended up moving back to Texas. Um, it's not showing me the rest of your comment, but we can certainly pray for Julie. I know there's a big call on your life and uh, we pray for um, Julie and for everyone who's had uh, a setback. I don't, you know, again, I don't, Was that the enemy blocking you? Or was it a donkey in the road? I, I mean, I just don't think God gets people into car accidents. I don't think it's something he does. So is there something in Florida that the enemy is kind of afraid of for you? Uh, the good thing is that God's timetable is, is completely flexible. Or like so often, like, oh, I'm waiting for God. And God's like, you know, I can do this anytime. I, I see. Yeah. And so don't don't let the enemy discourage you with that. Julie, okay. Um, ask God really to give you a revelation about what, you know, what's the enemy so afraid of? Why is he trying to block? And then, you know, of course, because God is always in the midst. What is it that God wants you to finish in Texas? What are some things that need to be wrapped up there? Kind of put a bow on that time, that season of your life, so that then, then you can go forward. But uh, enemy, the enemy can't close the door that God wants to open. There is a door that, that no one, no human, no car accident, no enemy can shut. And that door is there for you. And our God is now, and he can do it in an instant. He can give you divine acceleration. He can... Um, yeah, that, that's not hard for God. That's actually pretty easy for him. Okay, let me see who else we have. Yeah, um, Marion's identifying with that as well. The process, focus on the process. The outcome takes care of itself. Yeah, I mean, Marion, I know that God's gifted you with, with a passion for writing. And, you know, okay, so it's like, I want to write a book. I mean, that's an amazing goal. And you can set a reward and all the other things we've taught. But if you just get up every day and write for a half hour without that, no matter what, say it's what you do, no matter what, if you just do that, no matter what the book, how would the book not write itself? The book has to write itself. I, I mean, I'm just going to confess. I have not been writing at my, my writing for out all of my career has always been the same. I go away from it all for you know 10 days. Well, Vessel was five days, Special Blessings was 10 days, other books was, you know, like a weekend, and then back in the week. I never was a writer who would, woke up every morning and wrote for a while, never. And yet I was able to write 30 books. But I really feel like the Lord is challenging me now to be more diligent and to be more committed to the process rather than saying, well, I just got to get this book done and I'll go away, get it done in 10 weeks. 10 days, which is great. And I think maybe because I had so many children, I had two children at home and I was homeschooling that God gave me a grace to do that. And, and I'm sure he still will, but I feel like he's challenging me, even as I'm encouraging each of you to just be involved in the process. Just, just do it daily, do it daily, do it daily, do it daily. And God's just been, it's been fun. I've been enjoying it. Okay. All right. Um, Carol is loving to get my joy and peace back. So Carol, you can look up that scripture for me. Um, Diane sharing that she was co-laboring with the Holy Spirit on some projects and, and it's come to a stop. So let's, let's, let's pray about that. Lord, I want to, I want to pray for, for Diane and, and for anyone else who feels like, you know, we made a good beginning and it's like, Suddenly it stopped. And you're not alone. I, I, I can think of areas in my own life where I'm feeling like that too. And so, Lord, we just ask right now that, that you would show, and I think this, this comes back to the same thing we prayed for Julie, and I want to pray it here for um, Diane. What is, what is it? 
Is it, is it a pause? We began today talking about, you know, you know, you're running, you're running, you're running, and God says, okay, let's just pause, say la, you know, let comfort rest to regroup, to, to then continue the journey. It could be that. It could, it could very well be that, that there's kind of a, a selah, there's like a pause. And, and God wants you trusting the process and refreshing. I'm actually kind of feeling that for you. Um, it, it could also be that God's wanting you to refill. Like you've poured out so much, Holy Spirit was pouring in and you were pouring out, um, that there's also a refilling you know, the, the horses, I guess, would go to a well and they not like a camel, but you drink and refresh. So maybe there's like a, a, a time to refill. Do you need to get to a conference related to whatever your that project is and just kind of feed your soul, feed your spirit, feed your mind and, and refresh? I feel like that's kind of what it is. I feel like that's what it is. Okay. Um, everyone's loving this process. Everybody is engaging with us. So many people saying, I love the process. At least unfinished, pro pro <laughs> my unfinished projects. My word this year is finished. Well, we also shared the word focus, right? So focus. Let me hop down and see, maybe start the comments. Okay, da, da, da. Oh, okay. So Diane says that was an accurate word and she's in tears. You know it's an accurate word when you're in tears, right? Um. Uh, Heather also feels like the Lord is saying that um, writing keeps coming up in her life. Okay, so Robin, uh, who's who's in full time ministry, feels like maybe something is, or her boss even feels like she's having trouble focusing, and we've we've talked about that. And I think it's interesting that one of the C words was concentrate, focus. And so we're going to pray for that. Lord, I, I just pray for everyone that you would increase our ability to focus. And some of that is physical. I will tell you right now, some of it's physical. Um, ketosis. is. I, I was just reading again, more research on the power of ketosis. It clears your brain. And I, I would encourage you to start with that, to do a keto type diet, uh, keto fast, get into ketosis and stay in it for at least two weeks and see if you don't notice a difference with your concentration level. I really feel like that's a big answer for you. And then trust, just trust in God to lead. Okay, who else do we have? Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. Carol broke her neck. Wow. I'm so sorry. Carmen says this is really speaking to her. Uh, McCurley says she needs more direction. Husband lost his job. What's next? Oh, co-preaching with your husband. Wow. That really uh, resonated with my spirit. You know, it's, it's so funny. I feel that for so many of us that God's been doing kind of a, a preparation and a repositioning. And I, I feel that for you, that, that God's been, and notice how I didn't even know I was doing it, but putting my hands together like this, like maybe you and your husband are here, you're together, right? But God's putting you here. And I don't even know what this means, but I think you do. You're together with your husband. I, I totally feel this partnership with him. And it's here. It's together. But there needs to be, I, I see this come up. I know he's with God. You're with God. It's to read a little bit of a, a little bit of a shift in how you're working together. Yeah. And, and when that happens, it's going to change everything. Wow. I really feel that. <laughs> wow. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually curious to know what that is. And if you don't know, the Holy Spirit's going to show you.
I don't know why it's not letting me see full comments. I'm going to have to check with people who do more for Facebook lives than I do. I can't read Christy's whole comment here. And I, I don't like that. She says that um, he got as a plan. She's at a crossroads. I think a lot of us are. Let me see. Yeah, Robin, I, I, I mean, totally hope. That's your focus. You're the hope lady you're the minister of hope and i've given you a bunch of ideas and i i think they're totally solid i think you're the hope the minister of hope that's it i think that's your focus uh, uh someone else sharing my hope my word is courage for 2019 i must have the courage to step into what god is calling me to do and i'd be interested to hear from you if um some of the courage that you need is the courage that god directed me to because when god gave me courage did you notice where I went with that? It was courage to say no to some things. It was the courage to set some boundaries. And I'm wondering if, if that was for you, that, that part of saying a big yes to God is going to require saying no. And that's really hard for us, especially as women. But I feel like there's some no's. Um, you're going to have to say no to some things, like even some habits in your own life. There, you're going to have to say no to those. You're going to have to say no to some things that are kind of comfortable. Um, you're going to have to say no to some people. You're going to have to say no to some activities. Uh, there's going to be, I just, I felt that that, again, that that is an obvious thing for you. If your word is courage, that I think that God kind of directed me uh, to that for you. That yes, courage to step out um, and say yes, but also courage to say some no's both courage to say yes and courage to say no and sometimes the only way to say yes is to say no and sometimes saying yes gives you the boldness to say no no gives you saying no gives you the freedom to say gives you the time to say the big yes and saying the big yes is like no i ain't got time for this stuff it's like both end yeah uh, paula says her word is clarity so if i didn't have which i don't think i do um, that, that, uh, C could be clarity. So if I don't have number 12, that would be our number 12 C. I do like that clarity. He certainly had absolute clarity about what he was supposed to be doing at any given moment and was fully present. And so I like that. Thank you for sharing that. And I think a lot of people feel like they need, um, clarity in their lives. Let me see if there's some other people here. Denise, it's so good to see you. I love you. I'm so glad you're here. Lots of people. Glad it was a blessing. Let me see if there's any others. Esley's here. I love you, Esley. I love you. I can't wait to come back to Brazil. Esley, I want you to know that I have what I'm doing every morning. I have my English Bible, my Spanish Bible, and my Portuguese Bible. And my Portuguese Bible has space to write. And so I'm starting with the Psalms. And I'm doing one Psalm each day. And I do it line by line, English, Spanish. Well, first I read it in English. Then I read English, Spanish, line by line. And then I do English, Portuguese, line by line. So I'm getting ready to come back to Brazil. <laughs> and believe in God to open the door to Portugal as well. So Esli, so glad that you're here. Um, uh, I'm sure I'm messing up your name, Sinead, maybe she said that, that, that is for her. She said, I've said yes to things that have left me stuck and unhappy so that that was an accurate word for her. Yes. I love it. Holy spirit. Um, Teresa wants to become a pastor for her RV ministry to widows and the fatherless asking my pastors to sponsor me, taking a counseling course. Teresa, I just said that I feel like God is calling me more and more to counselors. And if you haven't connected with Esley, be sure to connect with her. Totally praying for your RV ministry. I love it. I love it. I love it. Julie's wanting to network with other Christians. This is awesome, awesome, awesome. JoJo says, great teaching today. Lo looking forward to best year ever. Awesome. You go. Congratulations. Marion finished her book, The Scarecrow's Tale, 27,000 words by writing daily. She's got two picture books, lots to do. 
Awesome. Praise the Lord. Hey, Sinead is coming to Portugal. Woohoo, woohoo. Portugal. Yeah, the church, the main church that I work with in, uh, of course, I work with um, Esley and her team of amazing psychologists and counselors and psychiatrists and lay uh, counselors. But then uh, the main church I work with is Advec and they've just opened a church in Portugal and we're talking about going there. So I'm just believing God to open that door as well. Well, this has been, I hope it's been awesome. Um, our first chapel with Facebook Live, if I'm not mistaken. I, I will get better at this. Um, yeah, praise God. We are... 20 minutes over. I hope that I'm able to download this. It's going to be really, really long. Okay. We love you guys. Please be sure to join me. Um, I will post in the Facebook group and I will email you how to join me free for the free five days, best year ever. And also join me for the paid class, the 21 days. And then we've got 26 days together. And also Guatemala, 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 who's coming? I forgot to mention one other thing. Who wants to come to Putacana? We have two more spots for the Lifestyle Freedom event in the Caribbean the last week of February into the first week of March. We have two spots left for Putacana. If you're interested in that, go to 7daystofreedom.com, 7daystofreedom.com. We have exactly two spots left. We love you guys. Thanks for joining me. I got to end this puppy. Let's see. How do I do that? Oh.